As the standings sit now, LSU and Alabama remain number one and two in the BCS respectively, setting up a potential rematch of that November 5th matchup in Tuscaloosa we remember so well. Would a rematch be good or bad for college football? I think you're going to see combinations of both because it's going to be a lot of people complaining about the BCS and arguing, pushing for a playoff. But at the end of the day, I think that the BCS got it right. The top two teams are going to be playing in the national championship if everything holds. Yeah, we say that's that's a great point, especially after that great weekend where uh, OSU I've learned and Oklahoma, for sure this Oklahoma <laughs> loses to Baylor in the, in the same weekend. Oklahoma uh, State, to Iowa yeah, State. Yeah, and, and I oh think I think I know the people who are going to be the most unhappy are going to be the Houston fans and also the Oklahoma State Cowboy fans who have had such a fantastic season and will likely finish number three in the BCS. But there have been so many times in the past in the past uh, since we've had this this five year stretch of SEC dominance where people, mostly us SEC fans, have said the win winner of the SEC championship might as well be the winner of the national championship. But after seeing the way that some of these teams from the Big Ten and Big 12 have performed in bowl games against the SEC in recent years, I got to feel like Alabama and LSU really are the number one and the, the, the two best teams in the country. I mean, don't get me wrong, I know they're the two best teams in the country, but you know, any other person in any other conference is going to say the SEC is always dominant, the SEC always gets what they want. So, you know, I mean, I know they're the number one and number two team, but I kind of hope to see, you know, another conference throw, you know, mix it up a little because everyone's seen that game. Don't get me wrong, it was a good game. But they but dominated so much, though. Oklahoma State and the Big 12 are probably the only school that can make a case yeah. to be in the National no, Championship I agree. game. But that I Iowa agree. State loss hurts too bad. Definitely. Well, Broncos quarterback Tim Tebow improved to 5-1 as a starter Sunday with a 16-13 overtime victory at San Diego. Denver is currently one game behind Oakland in the AFC West. Do you think Tim Tebow can lead this team to the playoffs? Yes, he can. When Tim Tebow first came into the NFL, I was so tempted to say right off the bat, there's no way this guy can be an NFL quarterback. I'm, I'm right there with you. Exactly. But, then, but then I realized, then I remembered, and this my, my, my law school friends are going to hate me because this is an appeal to emotion, but Tim Tebow is a guy who has proved people wrong at every stretch of his career, dating back to when he was a young guy. And then when he was going into high school at Nice High School in Florida, he was told then, you can't be a quarterback for Nice. And in Florida, there were some people who were saying, you won't be Florida's quarterback. And now, the let the wins speak for themselves, because every time this guy has been told no, he's proven everyone wrong. I swear, you put a football in his hand, and there's just something about that guy who makes that football go the right place at the right time. I mean, the other day, I was watching a YouTube video, and everyone always says, God is on Tim Tebow's side, because <laughs> he makes these crazy plays that no one thinks are going to go in the hands of the receiver, and they just fall in place, and he gets these wins. And I, really th I really think a lot of people need to have more faith in Tim Tebow, because he's showing people what he can do just like at Florida and I agree with y'all he's the way that he has done things has been very impressive uh, but uh, well when the football season resumes next fall the SEC will have some new faces Texas A&M will join the SEC Western Division and Missouri will join the East yes the East how do you think these new teams will fit in the SEC I think Texas A&M is going to struggle early, and the reason being they are middle of the road in the Big 12 to begin with, and then they lose their quarterback, Ryan Tannehill. They lose their starting running back, Cyrus Gray. They lose one of their top two receivers. And walking into the SEC West with how that's been this year, it's pretty much murderer's row, LSU, Alabama, Arkansas, even Auburn. Uh, so I think that uh, Texas A&M will struggle. But on the other side, Missouri returns the majority of their skill positions, returns seven out of ten of their top ten tacklers. And with the East as down as it's ever been, I think that they've got a good shot to make some noise early. Well, taking away stats and wins and losses, as far as whether or not they fit in in the SEC, A&M is a school that arguably, and I, can't, I never thought I would say this, Huge a tradition. school that has more, almost better tradition arguably than a few of the schools we have here in the SEC. That much Missouri, I'm not so happy about because Missouri is, is a team that has had great football teams, but is not known for having the passion and enthusiasm for football That's that we have here in the SEC, which is why I don't feel it's a Midwest mentality and I don't feel good about it. Now, an athletic director or an SEC president will like that. But that's not what makes – but the fans and the enthusiasm are what make the SEC special. From a tradition standpoint, I love Texas A&M and not Missouri. From a talent standpoint, probably Missouri. Maybe we should adopt that tradition of kissing the dates at the football games. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you guys would like that. <laughs> Moving on. When we come back, we'll give you our picks for the Heisman Trophy and several other awards. You won't want to miss it. Plus, we'll bring you the championship edition of the Matchup Ratchet Wrap-Up.